Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the Resurgence of Power Earth Set Review. Now, uh, if you've been keeping up with them, we've, uh, we've been going through all the colors, and I hope you've enjoyed the, the review so far. If you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments below. Um, Earth is you know, another one of my favorites, along with water, but um, we got some really nice looking cards in this one, and uh, some pretty interesting playable cards too. So. Um, let's get started. Uh, Armin, uh, when the enemy enters the field, choose a forward other than a multi element. Break it. Solid. Uh, until the end of the turn, Armin also becomes a forward of 8,000 power. You can only use this ability if you control a forward of 9,000 power or more. And only once per turn. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the conditional uh, the conditional action abilities is interesting. This one's probably the easiest one that I've read so far. Um, but being able to enter and just kill a forward and present a forward at the same time is very good. Uh, I, I'm glad they had to do something to make it other than multi-elements, right? So as long as it's a regular old <laughs> mono-colored forward, uh, you can break it, which isn't bad. Um, I think one of these might, might make its way to some decks. It's pretty good. It's just a really good out, I think, uh, that we didn't have before. Uh, so yeah, I like it. Uh, Delusionary Knight. Put Delusionary Knight, choose a job mannequin, it gains. This character cannot be broken until the end of the turn. Now, when I see this one and the one that resembles Terra, I can't remember, like, uh, the resemblance of a, you know, teenage FF6 character. I don't know. Um, this, they're both very good, but I like the other one better. I can just cancel the other one's effect. So, um, being broken is a different story, um, but it's, it's still good. It's cheaper, right? It's one cost. And I, you know, whatever, but, um, yeah, no, I like being, not being able to be targeted in general because you can get around, you know, you can get around both technically, but I think not be broken is easier than can't be targeted. Um, Galif, very nice looking card, uh, as well. Uh, this is the legendary. We got it early here in the review. Uh, Brave, when he attacks, uh, choose a forward, your opponent controls, deal the damage equal to Galif's power. Remove three cards in the break zone from the game. Galif gains 3,000 power until the end of the turn. And at damage three, he becomes 11k. So all in all, very strong card. Um, I guess he strived away from his, you know, force you to block kind of thing. Uh, in, this, in this one, uh, he kind of power crept himself every set, uh, in, in my opinion. And so now this was the best one. Just comes out straight and punches people like in the throat. So a uh, very good card. Um, I don't know if we have the Dawn Warrior support, but he is five. Uh, he is a category five, so he is searchable. Um, and so, I don't know, we like him. He's very dangerous and limited, so if you pull him, definitely go Earth, or like, at least let be Earth one of your colors. Uh, Kryl, uh, also both both of these arts. I believe it's the same one, same, uh, yeah. Yukihiro, yeah. Uh, Kryl, when Kryl into the field, uh, select one of the following two actions. Uh, choose a summon in your break zone and add it to your hand and choose a f or choose a five forward in your break zone and add it to your hand um, Both very good effects uh, I like the versatility, right? You can obviously build a deck around this in both ways I think most of the warrior lights are also five um, So, you know getting this either way is gonna be very useful for the deck. So I like this card a lot should see play uh, Kate Sith uh, 11 when it enters the field choose a forward in the break zone and it's your hand uh, at damage three, K Sith is on the field. K Sith can produce CP of an element, so pretty interesting. Uh, definitely a one of in most multicolor decks. Um, I can see it just being very helpful throughout the day. Like Earth has always, like has more recently been branded like the multicolor deck, multicolor engine, and so this adds to that. And uh, it's not a bad card, right? We just it's a turn two that eventually becomes a multi a cosmos, right? Like. <laughs> That's a, that's a power crap backup for sure. Um, Kolka, when he enters the field, you may discard a forward. When you do so, choose a forward. Deal the damage equal to the discarded forward's power. So, um, I like this for, you know, those, what's it called? Uh, that newest, the newer Sophie decks, things with like a lot of five costs and big heavy hitters. Um, they usually sit in your hand. You can't always play them at once, but eventually you'll, you can pitch them and, you know, kill something, still present board. Uh, you know, four CP to kill something isn't bad, but you know, it's pretty good. Uh, Seraphie, uh, when Seraphie enters the field, you may search for a card named Tama and add it to your hand. When your forward of cost less in this field, place a Jeb counter on Seraphie. 
Remove two gem counters from Seraphie, draw a card. You can only use this ability during your turn and only once per turn. Um, yeah, forwards of cost two, that's interesting. Um, I know the Tama is the Tama next, yeah. So the Tama is next, so we can talk about these together. Um, Tama can attack or block. Tama cannot be chosen by your opponent's summoner's abilities. When a forward you control is chosen by your opponent's summoner abilities, you may put Tama into the break zone. When you do so, cancel its effect. So, you know, this one searches this one. Uh, or any of the old Tamas. I believe we have uh, some in the past. Uh, but, you know, uh, being able to have an engine here and a body as well as protection while generating in the engine is interesting. So, it's not the worst little you know, duo that I've seen, but um, they're very cute. They go along with that Sherlota art, which I like very much. So, um, yeah, they're not bad cards. I, I, I kind of, I do hope they see play. Now, Daisy, here's here's one that really caught me off guard. Um, if a forward you control other than Daisy is dealt damage, that damage is dealt to Daisy instead. So, um, let me be specific here. This is, this is any damage, right? Um, so this is includes battle effect, um, summon ability and other <laughs> um, at damage 3 she's a 10k and for an S she gains 30,000 power until the end of the turn yes you read that right I thought it was 3,000 at first but then I got wrecked I got uh, I done goofed when I walked into a 30,000 power uh, <laughs> daisy um, so yeah what ends up happening and if, if it didn't if it didn't make sense at first right um We've seen cards like Susano, Philia, uh, the new Salamander uh, summon that just came out from the set, um, Frida. Um, there's a ton of cards, the bombs that deal multiple damage, right? Um, uh, Luso, etc., 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 right? Uh, effect and board wipes that deal damage, um, she eats them all, right? So, in order for it to, I guess, matter, and for order for it, for her to sponge enough she has to gain this much power now is there anything else we can do with all that power i don't think so um i haven't really sat i haven't really haven't gone to the lab with this one but um i do like daisy a lot i think she deserves this h um she's very dangerous um pulling multiples of these in um in sealed is is quite 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 annoying um with very limited summon pool um, but still, very good card. Very interesting. What do you think of her? Uh, Tilika. Uh, when Tilika enters the field, gain a crystal, and you can tap her for, uh, and an Earth to gain a crystal. Now, I had wished this card. I don't know what's going to happen this set um, or with standard, but this is the kind of card I was looking for last set um, with those mono Earth decks I was playing for a little while. Uh, Tilika just, I assume she'll just generate crystals for everything we need, right? Um, and so. At the very least, you get one, and at the very most, you they don't get rid of her for no reason. She shouldn't do anything other than she's just a generator for you. But man, this card is good. I like it. Um, if as long as crystals keep being relevant, this card should see play for the next few for the rest of this year. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say on that one. Uh, backup avalanche operative. Choose a forward. It gains brave until the end of the turn. You can only use ability during your turn. And then for one, choose a forward, name it job, name a job. It gains the name job until the end of the turn. Um, I kind of wish Avalanche Operatives didn't get this, um, but it is what it is. Um, going back to what I was saying in the, in the other video, we're kind of getting in, moving slowly into a world where we're going to have like multiple Avalanche, uh, not Avalanche, multiple Avalanche, but multiple seven important decks um, that are going to be relevant. Um, they're really pushing the seven down our throat. Um, and I'm sure that's great for a lot of people, but you know, when you have such a big fan base of a bunch of different other games, it's kind of annoying. Um, and so, you know, obviously we know Avalanche operatives are very strong already. And some of the other ones, this just means everything can be an Avalanche operative when needed to be, right? Um, and so getting uh, other effects to trigger when you're party attacking or so, or so on and so forth. And I, and I know I'm just like kind of uh, pigeonholing it to the Avalanche operative thing. Um, this card, I think, is good in general um, because it can help a lot of other decks that, you know, share the Earth element that kind of, like, need to change jobs. I, I know I've looked for that effect before and how we could abuse it. 
uh, and I think only what orator in water has something like that but I have to break it so this is definitely a, a, a lot better than that so I, I like this card in general I think it's a very good card uh, if it had been another color it would have been better in my opinion but and not an avalanche property uh, yeah that's all uh, then we can move on Hashmal uh, you may remove 10 nearest card choose a forward against 7,000 power if you pay the cost uh, all the forwards you control gain 7,000 power very good. I think I like this card too. Very strong. Um, this uh, the basic backup that we know about to draw a card. Polk. Uh, avalanche operative. When Polk gets to choose a job avalanche operative in your break zone and adds your hand. And you can put Polk in the break zone and choose a forward. It gains 2,000 power. Um, again, not really necessary. Um, but hey man, whatever. If we're going to have another season of... Uh, of avalanche operatives then so be it uh, if you can't beat him join him right i guess uh, uh choose a forward uh it cannot attack or block until the end of the turn uh, yeah uh we have stuff like this already if this card had brave it'd be better right just like uh attack and then boom tap can't this can't block me this turn so you'd have to block the other ones i don't know um probably decent and sealed but not i don't see a much of a point here in standard in L3. Uh, Yum, <laughs> Yum, Yum Kex. Uh, if he's dealt reduced, uh, he's a warp 3 for Earth and Colorless. Uh, if he's dealt damage, reduce that damage by 2000 instead, and that damage 3 against Brave, and when he's put from the field, the breaks on draw card. Very strong card during Limited, I found. Uh, it's kind of annoying to deal with. Uh, and so, uh, but outside of that, it's not, I don't see anything big and relevant here. Warp 3 is just feels like it takes a long time and then it doesn't have any real value on, you know, even deploying other than being a, a shield, kind of like a sponge. Uh, and that's not enough for me there, so we can move on to that, from that. Riku is, is a really good one, actually. So there are backups you control can produce CP of any element. Uh, when you cast a multi-element forward, uh, choose Earth forward in your uh, other than Riku in your break zone and add Jahan. This effect will only trigger once per turn. Uh, yeah, again, in limited, this card is, was absurd and created a lot of annoying scenarios for both players. Um, but in general, I think this is a really strong card. Uh, with more, uh, this one's going to grow a lot actually with uh, with the rest of as long as multi elements get imprinted for the rest of the year, pretty much. I assume uh, this Riku should grow with everybody. Um, I like it a lot. It's a rare, so it's not a big, shouldn't be too expensive, but it's very good. Uh, Zande, we kind of talked about this one in the fire one, but uh, we'll touch over it again. Um, it's such a, it's an interesting board wipe. Uh, when he enters the field, choose up to the same number of forwards your opponent controls as the as the characters put into the break zone from your field during this turn, and he has a, an action ability. Uh, put five backups into the break zone, play Zande out of the field, you know, this ability during your turn, and if he's in the break zone, right? So, you know, you kind of push it for game, you use this effect, get rid of your five backups, kill nine things, deal 9,000, and then should be able to swing right like he's threatening his existence in your in your opponent's life just being in the race so solid card cool h very cool art um you know he's pretty chill he pretty much doesn't do anything else right he's just that looming threat in the break zone um so i like him for that reason um if your opponent's not paying attention uh or if you kind of have protection for your break zone right things of that nature or you know just hold on to one later and then just pitch him when you need to and then boom go Go balls deep. Uh, Bosch recovered as well with fire, um, but uh, I like him for so many reasons. Um, you know, he deals yourself a point of damage, then you can search for fire earth character. He's got two, uh, three, and five damage thresh thresholds for, uh, for a, a in power increase, and when he attacks the OEK. Um, I, I like these cards more. Uh, I like him a lot because we're, we've been looking for these cards a little bit more these last few, this last set, I think, kind of cards that deal ourselves a point of damage. And kind of help us get to these damage thresholds the damage thresholds in general have become more and more threatening they're more important than crystals and they're more important than uh multicolored at the moment so you know you don't want to get your opponent to three you don't want to get your opponent to five etc etc and if you forget some certain decks you have my opponents at six then you know now i can do even nuttier things right um this card is not only going to facilitate those plays uh on my turn right in my uh when I want them, not when you want them. Um, and so he's just gonna like, 
Andy searches you a piece, a crucial piece to whatever it is you're doing, something that can help you bring the game back, um, or something that you've been, you know, you just can't get, you couldn't find, right? Like, uh, whatever, whatever it is, like the fire or earth character, other than Bosch, and you know, gets to your hand. So, very strong, should see play. Leon is uh, good for nothing. We talked about this one as well. Um, <laughs> Chalinka, probably also good for nothing, um, but it breaks a monster with no condition, so that's it's cool, I guess. Uh, Tifa also, um, where have we gone through these already? Let me see where we're at. Uh, yeah, we saw, we went over some of these in the wind stuff, so the Fran and the Tifa. Well, if you guys want to know more about those, go please check out the, the wind reviews if you haven't already. Same thing with the fire stuff. Uh, and we can move on to this vanille now, which I like very much. Uh, Dole on active vanille, choose one opponent's auto ability. If your opponent doesn't pay two, cancel its effect. Now, this is really good when you're like, I think it's really good all the time, right? Because even if they're paying for backups with their backups, it's still slowing them down significantly. Um, now, the auto abilities, I, I, I assume this one will stop the most of, and, and this is just a guess really, is the warps, right? If I'm able to dole this every time your, your warp, like remove a counter comes up, then uh, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to stay in limbo uh, for a few turns, right? So instead of warp five, it'll be instead of warp two or warp three or warp four, it'll be like warp five, six, or seven. Um, and I, I think it's very useful for that reason. Now the other thing is, yeah, sure. Sometimes you'll you'll want to use it for other stuff. Um, you know, kind of cancel. I don't try to cancel a, a Shantoto, which is probably the best one, right? Because they'll have to pay nine CP for this. Um, or, uh, what else, what else, uh, you know, things, things that require like anything like in the five or, or five plus ratio should be, should be draining enough, right? Like if my opponent wants to play Cecil to play something else, to play something else, right? If Cecil met him into, uh, one of the other guys, right? Uh, they're going to have to have all of that, that, that extra two CP, which is sometimes a problem, uh, for some of these decks. And so it, it all in all, this card is going to be very annoying. And then. You know, when you feel like you it's she's done her job, you can you know put her to the break zone, choose a backup in your break zone, and it's your hand. Like that that second part of the effect wasn't necessary, but it is an H, so it got it. Um, again, just versatility, and I and I love that about this card. Uh, uh, Sonon, the other legendary back attack. You can remove one Earth back backup you control and a lightning backup you control from the game instead of paying CP cost. Uh, cast Sonon. Uh, when Sonon enters the field, choose a forward and up to one of the forward. And so in turn, the former gains 500 and the latter gains, uh, yeah, gains 5,000 and the latter loses 5,000. So, um, yeah, just more back attack threats. Uh, he is the box topper promo, I believe, full art. So you should get plenty of these. Um, yeah, the, the being able to remove this, the, the backups, um, whether they're uh, active or tapped is really good. Just frees up space, and especially in these colors, we always need that. Um, and so effectively, he's kind of cheaper than you might think. So like, as long as that CP generated something throughout the throughout the game, you can do it, right? Like, it's pretty good. I don't know. He should see play. He is a seven, you know, character. So obviously, someone's gonna, you know, use it. Um, Billy Bob, another avalanche operative. When Billy Bob enters the field, choose a forward other than card named Billy Bob in your break zone and add to your hand. Um, yeah, just a really strong card. Um, and, and then this is kind of what I was talking about earlier in the in the sealed and limited pools. When you have Riku and this guy, you kind of just like filtering them, right? If you manage to get a Riku and like two of these guys, one's in the break zone, you play him, he'll target something else, Riku will target the Billy Bob, and then eventually you can kind of just keep looping from there. It's kind of annoying, um, but it's common. It's cards like that that are gonna, you know, win you the game. And so these are very good cards for limited. Um, I'm sure he might see some play because he's an avalanche operative. He's off color technically for the rest of it, but it's not to say that that's it's not that third uh, FF7 deck that we've been talking about that could be anything yet, right? Oh, and we're down to the rest of it stuff. Yeah, there's the 15 stuff from the starter, which we don't need to go over. And uh, PodCloud, which I thought was interesting for a reprint, honestly. Um, you know, just a reminder too, uh, and I don't think I mentioned this in the other one, uh, These this serial number is still 11. So these are not even good in, in L3. 
So, um, as much as I like these Amano Art Legacy Legacy Parallel Foils, I think that's what they call them. Um, I'm still calling them Legacy from the last few sets, but they're called Parallel Foils. Um, I don't, they're just better clouds and then, I don't know, I would just wish it was a card on its own, that's all. Uh, and, I, and I've said that already, but that's just my thoughts. Um, comment below if you share that sympathy, like that feeling. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it for the Earth one. Um, highlights are definitely Galif, um, as the Earth, and the other legendary is Sonon, so he's very strong. I like them both. Uh, Sonon's probably a little less impressive to me. Not just, not saying he won't see play or anything, he's just not really, like, doesn't hype beast me, you know what I mean? The other cards from Earth that I think are crazy are, are Daisy and Tilika. Um, Riku, of course, and Vanille. Um, those are the big, those are the... The surprising, the you know, the ones that draw my attention, the top five, if you will. Um, Koga's okay, and so is Armin. Uh, Armin for like close backups. Uh, but yeah, those are the ones Riku, Tilika, Daisy, um, Vanille. <laughs> um, let me know what you guys think. Which ones are your favorites? Which ones are you guys are gonna think or see play? And which ones are you gonna rip up and throw in the trash? Or which ones are you gonna <laughs> just collect all the foils? because they're your favorite card. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, see you guys on the next one.